Loads of money is up for grabs Thursday night. Look, it should be a good game, and let's make it even better by winning some cheddar. These are the top plays that you must have for Thursday night. And let's begin with a $7,000 flat Devin Singletary who continues his dominant role. You see, as you can see here, these were the snaps for the Bills on Thanksgiving in their last game, Week 12, and Singletary played 46 more snaps than any other Bills running back, the clear and obvious RB1. Now, that equated to 78% of the snaps, and he ran 36 routes in this game. He's active in the receiving game in the red zone. He's a solid back. And now, after those 36 routes, he's now top four amongst all running backs. Yes, Devin Singletary in routes run. His passing game usage is elite. He earned 14 of the possible 22 running back opportunities in Week 12, about 64%. That's good. And at this price tag of $7,000, it's more than fair. It makes him, in my opinion, a fantastic play, easily a top five play on the slate. Now, another strong play on this slate is $10,400 Ramondre Stevenson, which in my opinion, he's slightly underpriced here. You see, on his last game on Thanksgiving, he put up yet again another 20-point performance, and he did nothing on the ground. Only seven rush attempts, but he had 10 targets, a season-high nine targets, and he now has six or more targets in five straight games. His usage since week three amongst all running backs is the second best in the NFL. He's averaging over 19 points per game during that time. And now, Damian Harris isn't expected to play on Thursday night, which means he's going to see even more usage. You have the rookies Pierre Strong and Kevin Harris behind him, but they're not going to see anywhere near as much work as Damian Harris was seeing, like 30 to 40 percent of the snaps. So consider Stevenson a really good play at this price point. Now let's talk about an interesting wide receiver, and that would be Isaiah McKenzie, who's kind of expensive here at $6,800, but he's coming off of really weird weeks the last two weeks. Let's discuss. You see, these are his snaps. Two weeks ago, we saw 40 percent of the snaps, which is actually a season low, and then it's okay. Things are starting to look bad. This isn't good. Before the bye week, he wasn't great. Maybe it's time that the rookie Khalil Shakur is starting to take over. But then as you can see right here, he played 73% of the snaps on Thanksgiving in his last game, which is the polar opposite. It was actually a season high. And this resulted in some elite usage. He put up a season high 22 points, 10 targets. He had over 100 total yards. These 96 yards were more than he had the previous month combined. So I think this price point is $6,800. I'd rather have Devin Singletary. I'm not too all in on Isaiah McKenzie here because we've seen him be so hot and so cold. And now I think you're paying for it. I likely slowly start to avoid him, but you can't ignore what happened last week. And speaking of things you can't ignore from last week, Nelson Aguilar in his second game back, he's now just $4,800. I'd rather pay for a guy like this who's $2,000 cheaper. Yeah, he's not playing with Josh Allen, but he's also not the third or fourth option in his passing attack. Since he returned from injury two weeks ago, he played 61% of the snaps. He was somewhat limited, but last week he played 77% of the snaps, which was a season high and it led to great usage. And like an Isaiah McKenzie, season high eight targets, great game over 18 points. I don't think this is replicable. He did it on a deep pass, but that's kind of his game. Now we must say that he benefited from Jacoby Myers leaving this game and only playing 16 total snaps because Aguilar saw more slot usage, which is where Mac Jones loves throwing to. So expect Aguilar to be involved, but with Myers getting healthier this week, he won't operate as a number two receiver, probably the number three here, but has some upside downfield. And now we get to an interesting guy, and that's Gabe Davis. He's the only $8,000 player. The next guy above him is $1,400 more. The guy below him is $800 more, so he's sort of in this unique price point. And Davis continues to lead this team in snaps and routes run, even more than Stefan Diggs, but he doesn't earn targets anywhere near Stefan Diggs because Davis struggles to separate. He's getting targeted just 17% of his routes, which is 78th in the NFL amongst wide receivers. There's only 32 teams, people. And to make matters worse, he ranks 87th against man coverage, which the Bills aren't seeing a lot. They're seeing a lot of too high shells. They're having to run the ball when they see man coverage, though. It's not going to Davis. It's more than likely going to the Diggs and even the McKenzies of the world. Now, all that's pretty negative, but he's still a volatile player. And at this 8K price range, he's really unique. You could probably get to him and leave a lot of money on the table. He's coming in lower owned, according to the DFS blueprint down below on Patreon, which actually makes him appealing in a game mode like Daily Fantasy Sports, where ownership matters for a volatile high upside player. Now, sort of the opposite of a Davis is Jacoby Myers, who actually gets open, who ends up seeing a lot of targets, but he doesn't have as much upside as Gabe Davis. And I mentioned earlier, Mac Jones loves throwing to the slot, and that's where Myers is a majority of the time, about 51% of the time so far this season. He looks like he's healthier after getting injured a week ago. He'll find himself in a matchup against the Bills secondary that has improved this season as they're getting healthier. They rank 12th in the NFL, but in the slot, I think he'll find advantages. That said, I do prefer Devin Singletary because you're not getting as much upside out of Myers. And similar can be said for this next player. He's a tight end. And that would be Dawson Knox, who two games ago, he had a season high seven catches. He had 70 yards, seven targets. It was all great. And they came crashing back down to earth at higher ownership on Thanksgiving. He only ended up putting up 3.7 fantasy points, just two targets in this one. Why? Well, because Isaiah McKenzie was seeing 10 targets, something he hasn't done all season long. He took away from Knox. But the positive news is that in this game, he still saw an elite role. He played 60 of the 78 tight end snaps. He ran 40 routes. The next closest tight end, only one other tight end was using Quinn Morris. He only ran eight routes. He's also seeing slot usage at 
Lars. I think after a bad game, people are going to avoid him here, which like Gabe Davis is making him a nice play because he has the upside of scoring a touchdown or seeing six or seven targets. Now, another interesting play at a fair price point is the veteran Devontae Parker, who's just $5,600. Now, Parker returned from injury right here. I highlight it in week 11. He played just 37% of the snaps. He was clearly limited in this game versus the Jets, but then on Thanksgiving, got back to a full-time role. He ended up playing 86% of the snaps, was the leading snap getter at wide receiver and route runner with Jacoby Myers hurt on Thanksgiving, and it led to four targets. And now he's played in seven healthy games this year, and in three of those games, he's earned 10 plus points. And 10 plus points of $5,600 on the showdown slate is likely enough to be in an optimal lineup. I think he's slightly underpriced given the fact that he's now healthy as of last week, and he has a decent red zone role. All right, so he's somewhat of a value. Now, all the way up top, the most expensive player in the slate, Josh Allen. Look, in the DFS blueprint right now, my projections have him as the highest projected player by four more points than anybody else. Now, you can get those projections down below in the DFS blueprint, joining thousands of other people utilizing them to actually win more and to stop losing. Now, that four-point gap between him and the next highest projected player means he's technically too cheap. Of all of these players above $5,000, you go all the way down to Damian Harris, who's going to end up missing this game, but all these players above $5,000, the defense is a bunch of players we've talked about, like Jacoby Myers, Isaiah McKenzie, Devin Singletary, all those guys. Josh Allen is my highest value play, meaning the best point per dollar play, even though he's over $12,000. That's saying something. And I mean, the dude was the quarterback too last week, very quietly on Thanksgiving. He puts up 78 rushing yards, three total touchdowns, and another 30-point performance. Absolutely dominant. Now he faces a Patriots pass rush that is at best middle of the pack. He'll have time to throw and find running lanes. Now on the opposite side of this game, Mac Jones is nowhere near as dynamic, but he's also coming off of a really good performance. Mac Jones is just $9,400, so you get a nice discount off of Josh Allen, and that nice performance is season high. He goes for 300 82 yards and two touchdowns versus the Vikings playing catch-up. The issue is he's not as good of a value even at the price discount as Josh Allen. That was his only game over 19 points this season. And the Bills rank 24th versus the run, meaning that they're probably going to try and run the ball in New England. That's kind of how they're built with Ramondre Stevenson in this one, which means less time, less plays overall when the clock is ticking, and less upside for Mac Jones even at this price point. So I pass on Mac Jones here. I think New England's going to run the ball. I also think that Buffalo is probably going to have success running the ball, which is why I ended up taking the over on both running backs over 60 and a half rushing yards on Ramondre Stevenson over 58 and a half on Devin Singletary I combine these two on price picks $25 to win $75 and we have ourselves a lovely community bet and if you use the link in the description with the code SAL22 when you sign up you'll get a free bet up to $100 you put in 25 you get 25 back 50 you get 50 back you put in a hundred dollar rooskies you're a heavy hitter a kingpin a head honcho you get a hundred dollars right back use that code SAL22 with the link in the description below on prizepicks.com now the next interesting play is Stefan digs everybody knows the guy he's fantastic but his price range sandwiched in between Ramondre Stevenson and Josh Allen almost $12,000 I think people are just going to go up to Josh Allen and down to Ramondre Stevenson making him a nice play according to the DFS blueprint he's coming in nearly 10% lower owned than he should be he's a strong play and let me remind you he just put up 22 points last week and had 15 targets and this isn't anything crazy for him because he's making it a common occurrence he now has 15 or more targets in two of his last three games I like him and Josh Allen combined in lineups all right now let's get back to that tight in position on the Patriots side of the ball with Hunter Henry. Hunter Henry here is $4,600, which is more than a fair price tag. He had a touchdown last week, should have had two, and had a solid game. He was the clear main tight end in this game, seeing 39 snaps compared to just 16 for Jonu Smith, and he ran 32 routes compared to just nine for Jonu Smith. And all this led to a good day. He had that touchdown, 63 yards, should add another one. 15 fantasy points was a top 10 tight end, his best performance on the year. However, the Patriots threw more in this game. Mac Jones had nearly 400 passing yards. Don't expect that this week, which means everybody comes down, especially Hunter Henry. Henry. Previous weeks, Henry is seeing at best three or four targets in a game, so expect maybe two or three in this one, which means he's overpriced here. And another player who's slightly overpriced is James Cook at 3600 I think he's definitely worth adding in season-long leagues because, well, if anything happens to Devin Singletary, he is potentially a league winner. He's a dynamic player, top 10 in yards per touch this year. But James Cook at nearly $4,000 here. Look, he's not seeing a lot of snaps. 14 snaps last week. Yes, he's still playing ahead of Naeem Himes, but maybe, maybe you're getting a six-touch game out of him. It makes it really difficult to want to get there compared to the kickers who are some of the best plays in the slate both kickers top five plays in the slate there you go now disclaimer i'd probably only be playing one of those guys for the obvious reasons of not having a lot of upside playing a kicker and now the other running back in the bills backfield is naeem himes who they traded for three thousand dollars he's overpriced and look they gave up zach moss which 
you know, they just flipped the running back, but also a six round pick. I mean, that's something. It's not a lot, but it is something. So it is a little bit odd to see him only playing four snaps last week. They said he didn't know the playbook coming into his third game with them. Then it was a short week for Thanksgiving. So maybe he just still doesn't know the playbook, but it looks like the second round pick who they have more invested in technically than a name Himes. Well, it looks like he is going to be the backup here. All right. So that covers our bases with all the running backs. Let's dive deeper into wide receiver. And on the Patriots side of the ball, Kendrick Bourne's only $2,200. And last week he operated as the wide receiver three. He ended up playing 37 snaps, some of his best usage on the entire season. This only happened because Jacoby Myers was hurt. He'll operate as the wide receiver four moving forward at best. Maybe even the rookie Tyquan Thorne will be taking even more usage away from him. He's probably a pass for me. And speaking of Tyquan Thorne, he operated as the wide receiver five last week. He's just $400 down here. And as the wide receiver five, he still played 20 snaps. Maybe he plays 15. Maybe he jumps like we said, Kendrick Bourne in this one, because he does have a unique skill set. He's the burner on this team. 4-2 speed at the combine. Now the combine track was running a little bit faster, but still even 4-3 speed is absolutely elite. It's top 1% of all time. And the reason I point that out is, well, at $400, maybe they give him 10 routes running this one and he sees one or two deep shots and that's all it takes on a showdown for a $400 player. You connect for a 40, 50 yard pass. Heck, maybe it's a touchdown. There you go. There's at least somewhat of a path for him to hit quickly compared to the guys like Kendrick Bourne and other wide receiver threes and fours on the bills. Now, disclaimer, of course, it's a very low likely chance that a wide receiver four or five in a game is going to do that. But if there was one, it would be him because of his skill set. Now, outside of that, the value that I'm soaking in is these kickers in this 4K range and is the Patriots D at just $3,200. I do like those values for what you're seeing here because there's not much else. There's Quentin Morris. He's a backup tight end, maybe runs five routes. He's a target. I don't want it. There's John o. Smith, who last week only ran nine routes, saw no targets, but the weeks before that was actually seeing usage. These are his targets in the previous game. Zero last week, but then four and three previous games, and he was seeing more routes, 20 routes, nine routes, 10 routes, then just five routes last week. So maybe he gets back up to 10 routes. If you're running 10 routes, you're unlikely to see four targets. So that's a 40% target rate. That would be setting records in the NFL. It's more likely that John who runs 10 routes and sees like zero to two targets. I'm not interested. You could maybe talk me into a $200 Khalil Shakur for the same reasons as Tyquan Thor, and these dudes are on the field. I mean, even with Isaiah McKenzie seeing season high usage last week, Khalil Shakur still played 34 snaps, you could see down here, and he still ran 18 routes. You're telling me a $200 player is going to run 15 to 20 routes in a game and is skilled, this rookie who can play the slot? Yeah, that means something. So you do have some absolute punts at wide receiver, albeit low chances of hitting for you. They're at least somewhat viable. But with that said, the kickers, along with Josh Allen and Devin Singletary, look to be some of the top plays in the slate according to the DFS blueprint. If you're somebody who would like to stop losing and start actually winning and making more money, that DFS blueprint is for you, and you can check it out linked down below on Patreon.